Like I remember working with at CNN with um, a woman who had just turned 50. I think I was probably in my 30s at that point. And the, yeah. the boss, the, the I think it was, um, oh gosh, I just spaced on his name. Who is, he's now passed away, but he was then the CEO of CNN. Basically fired her because she was too old. She had just turned 50. <gasps> And she oh. was amazing. Ama- I loved her. She was a brilliant journalist. And I was mortified by this. And so I think what I've done now is I've turned that into, okay, you're all- aging is beautiful. Women are beautiful. Hi, everybody. This is Diane Gilman, uh, formerly the queen of jeans, and now definitely too young to be old, even though I just had a birthday and turned 78, and it is going to be a great podcast today because if you are 55 or over, female, and you're thinking, what's up here? There's no really special makeup for me. There's no special hair products for me. No one's telling me how to keep my beauty or how to apply those products to make myself beautiful. No worry. We've got Suzanne Blondes. She was, first of all, a model. Second of all, in the late 80s, Revlon's Charlie Girl for two years. Third of all, a fantastic makeup artist for television. Boy, Suzanne, did I need you. Why are you coming into my life so late? And let's just get down to it. So, Suzanne, welcome. I am so excited to have you. And now you are basically on YouTube and you're there to be a cheerleader and a guide when it comes to beauty for older women. Am I correct? That's exactly right. I, my passion has always been it, working with older women on camera. I've loved, I loved it when an older woman huh. walked in. It was wonderful. Just, I love taking them and saying, no, you're beautiful. Let's make you even more beautiful. Let's take your innate beauty and enhance it. Yeah, because I see that you've been the makeup artist for Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post and who I've met. Um, I love Christiane Amanpour. Yes. Uh, but then again, you've also done Wolf Blitzer. You've done Larry King. You've done Jesse Jackson. My gosh. So... What turned you from being in front of the camera to being behind the camera? You know, I, I didn't really love modeling. I think that was a, uh, I found modeling very, it's very, very stressful. And I think if, if you just look at that world from the outside in, you yeah. think, oh, how great these, but also, I mean, to be in it, you're just constantly on a diet. You're constantly having to be super thin. You're never the right weight. You're never the right look. Your teeth are never right. And for somebody who's very sensitive, like myself, I do not have a thick skin. Um, it was agonizing. And plus, I was 16 years old when I started. So, wow, you know, you're 16 and someone tells you you got to lose, you know, five more pounds. And I was like, you know, it was just, it was agonizing. I didn't have the emotional, I guess, um, makeup to handle that. And I just wanted to eat, you know what I mean? Like, I think that whole toxic um, side of the industry is, it's re- it is what you think it is. It's really, really bad. And I, I think after I hit like age 20 and I had the contract with Revlon for a couple of years before that, and I thought, you know, I'm out. I, I don't want to do this anymore. And yeah. so I, I yeah. basically decided I love being on set. I enjoy the set. I enjoy the interaction. I enjoy teamwork. I love teamwork. So I thought, oh, I'll just go do makeup. So it was more of how can I be a part of the scene without being the center of the scene? And so um, so it was great. I, I love being behind the camera. I love supporting people. You know, actually, um, I was so photophobic. I thought my nose is too big and my face is too fat and my hair is too frizzy and I'm too chubby. And I had a million, million reasons. So people always just say, oh, you should try modeling and definitely too short. But I got on camera in television at the age of 47. Yeah. And I remember, Suzanne, I was on TV for about six months. 
and my husband at the time alive said, come with me. And he, this is so cruel, but it was so, so right. Bought a three way mirror. And he said, I want you to look at yourself in the three way mirror. And I said, I didn't want to. And he said, no, I'm forcing you. He said, you see that double chin? You see all the sagging. He said, I'm telling you, if you want a television career, get yourself to a plastic surgeon for a full facelift immediately. I would have avoided it my whole life. I, I never planned on being in front of the camera. Now I like it. But I'll tell you what, at the age of 78, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Pressure to, and I had to teach myself. We did makeup with a professional um, for TV for all those years on QVC HSN. But then suddenly COVID hit. You were doing TV at home. I now suddenly had to learn how to do my own makeup. Well, how do you make your skin look smoother? How do you get that inner glow? How do you make your nose look smaller? I mean, whoa, what a learning curve. So it is. And you know, I think what I, my stance on it is that women are already beautiful. I mean, I think the industry itself, you're talking about the industry itself, which is t uh, totally true. Like I remember working with at CNN with um, a woman who had just turned 50. I think I was probably in my thirties at that point. And the, yeah. the boss, the, the, I think it was, um, oh gosh, I just spaced on his name. Who is, he's now passed away, but he was then the CEO of CNN basically fired her because she was too old. She had just turned 50 <gasps> and she oh. was amazing. Ama I loved her. She was a brilliant journalist and I was mortified by this. And so I think what I've done now is I've turned that into, okay, you're all, aging is beautiful. Women are beautiful. You know, I voted not to go the plastic surgery, Botox filler route just because, and I don't have anything against it. I understand, I, I am a cheerleader, right? If I'm for whatever you want and whatever the person wants. But for me personally, I thought, you know, there's, there's very few voices that have not gone that way that are on front of the camera. So I'm gonna be that voice. And what I you find know, is the majority yeah. of women who email me say, you know, okay, we're looking for somebody who knows how to take aging skin and brighten it and make, but I want to look like myself. I don't want to go that other route. And so, exactly right. And so that's what I've done. And so, you know, my, my take on when women sit in front of the chair, when they're going to go on camera, yes, I can use certain products to brighten their skin. I can use certain foundations for sure. For example, I'll definitely put a C serum on their face. Really? Def definitely. And I'll put a hyaluronic acid on their face as well. And, I use and that. If, yeah. If they need it, I'll use a moisturizer. Um, but generally speaking, right before you go on camera, that's a wonderful thing to do. I did it this morning. You just pop a wow. little seed serum. But you want to get, so this is a really technical point, but I think this is a great shopping point for women who are looking for great products, is you want to get an oil-soluble vitamin C. In other words, L-ascorbic acid is water-soluble. There are different types. There are eight different types of vitamin C. There's not just one. So you want to get an oil soluble. And so that's tetrahexidecyl ascorbate for those chemistry geeks out Just there. Just give me an idea of a product <laughs> that has you that, like okay? chemistry. I'm your girl. I, I love all that stuff. But in uh, any case, oil, you want oil soluble. So stay away from l acid. It's not oil soluble. In other words, it's not going to do very much. So if you get an oil soluble, it's called THDA, the short version. And you can tell when you go on. If you see l acid, wrong type. Um, and I actually have a blog on my website. Just type in C Serum under the blog and it'll pop up the eight different types the of which one to buy. The, the Beauty Shaman. The Beauty Shaman. The magic, magic. Now, um, I go less for the technical and more for the result. Yeah, that's and right. I, I try to use hydrolog, what is that kind of acid? Hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic, Hyaluronic acid. acid. Yes. Yeah. Every, every day, and I use a whole beauty regime. I even use, from a company called Lima that is out of England, yes, I'm familiar a with small it. handheld red light laser. That's great. I use, that works. I use it for 10 minutes every day, and I'll tell you what, I am blown away 
yeah. at the firmness. It's given my jawline. And you know what? You just have to be disciplined. Yeah. Um, for me, and I am bordering on 80 years old now, I've stayed out of the sun for years because I went through chemotherapy and it makes you super um, prone to sunburn. Yeah. And that's been a great advantage. Everything in life that is a disadvantage can turn to an advantage. So I don't have the amount of sun damage that you would have if you were living kind of a normal, healthy life. But I will always look at the blurb and and I like Charlotte Tilbury yeah. because she actually creates a makeup that is for photo Right. And television and kind of shines the light out there. I almost think it's got mica particles in it. What is your favorite foundation for older woman with some crevices on her face, which I have too, as an everyday, I want to look beautiful, I want to feel confident, but I don't want to be over made up. The big mistake older women make, this is this is a huge issue I see with a lot of older women that come in the studio, is they use too heavy a foundation. And because they're thinking, I want to cover my age spot and I want to cover it, it's all about cover, cover, cover. That's actually the wrong way to look at it. So okay. the, the right way to look at it is take a great care of your skin, which you do. So in other words, get facials, use hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, alpha hydroxy acids, use some really great products. And also I do a lot of internal discussions, in other words, to supplements and diet and that kind of thing's huge. But when it comes to the foundation, I'm, I'm more, I, I'm less brand focused and I'm more focused on get a light to medium coverage that is dewy, a dewy finish. Uh, so yes. in other words, yes. if you like Charlotte Tilbury, go for that. Cause every brand's going to have a light coverage, a medium coverage, a full coverage, stay away from matte as much as possible. We don't want to look matte. I agree. We, don't we? And I I hate that look. It's too heavy. I want to see dewiness. Like I put women in front of a, a camera, older women, and they're dewy. And then I take a little tiny brush, and I look in the monitor, and I powder them only where it shows up in the monitor. Because ah, otherwise, so that, too much. That is my other uh, discussion. Yeah. Um, I've been told by a million makeup artists, don't use powder but it's difficult in front of all this lighting and there's tons right. of ring lights in my house and it was it was impossible on tv um in a studio that didn't really have great lighting not to use powder and interestingly enough sadly too uh people will approach me on the street and say hey aren't you diane gilman boy you look so much better in person and i'm thinking to myself that's because my makeup artist used to put yeah. so, so much, much yes. powder that she actually used to have to take miniature sponges oh. and sponge the powder off my false eyelashes. And I would just think to myself, isn't there something wrong yeah. with this? And yeah, there was. So, you know, the good thing is times have changed. So I probably a lot of women watching this aren't on camera. And if you're not on camera, you just don't either don't use powder or use a very, very translucent powder. My favorite powder yes. is Ben Nye translucent powder. It's not well known. It is not a well-known name brand, but it's very translucent. Laura Mercier makes a beautiful translucent powder as well. I don't know the Charlotte Tilbury powder. So I think you just want as sheer as humanly possible. Sheer. And as yes. little as humanly possible. And if you're on camera, you know, the, the cameras have changed a lot. They've gone into 4K. They've gone into HD. It's really, yeah. it's made it incredibly hard for older women. I always go yes. with, there's a certain filter that I used to take with me on set and say, and if it was an older woman, I'd say, can we please put this filter over her key light? Huh. Um, and it was called Cosmetic Peach. So if you're on camera, go to the late, go to the local or, you know, Mike's camera, whatever, and say, I want Cosmetic Peach. It's a it's a, it's basically a gel and you take that and you put it over your ring light. I have it in sections on my ring light. In other words, it's so that wow. it's not too overly peach. And that's why it's got this. I'm writing this down. Lovely glow. You know, I'm 57. I probably haven't got a wrinkle with this stuff. Like it works really well. So cosmetic peach is brilliant. I love it. And then you want to, you know, use a lot of warmth in your lighting. Don't go for daylight. Daylight's really bad on um, older skin. 
but I love, I, I, you know, my, my foundation that I use is a professional brand. It's, it's a, it's called RCMA. So this, you have to go to a professional store or order online in order to get it, but it's very, um, it's basically a medium coverage. And then I thin it out with a little primer. So this is a great thing. If you have a medium or a full ah. coverage, put it on your hand, drop some primer in it. Yeah. You know, or moisturize it. I never it, thought and then about put it that. On. And, and then you can put like, you know, you can do concealer on top of it. I like to do foundation first and concealer second. So you don't overplay it. Yes. Right. Yes. That's right. Cause that's where we, it sets in fine lines. And a lot of women ask me, what about concealers and highlights? And, you know, I, you know, I, that's where I spend my money. Like if I, my kit, I've got, everything's professional grade, but, but I really spend money on really good concealers and really good highlights because the bad wow. ones are going to set. That's why that happens. People email me all the time. It just keeps setting. It looks bad. Well, that's because it's cheap. The other, the other problem is if your skin is dehydrated and most older women don't drink enough water. That's drink me. water. Okay. So here's a great water tip for all of us older women. I'm drink drinking water, right now. But here's the thing. Okay. This is really weird. You're going to remember this because it's weird is get some Celtic or Himalayan salt. And every time you drink a glass of water, take a pinch of salt and put it on your okay. tongue and then drink water. And the reason for that is we are actually depleted in salt. So this is very controversial. Okay. This would be good <laughs> because salt has been made white, right? It's been stripped. So it doesn't have any, um, nutritional value. So our bodies need that in order to retain water. So if you take a really high value salt, uh -huh. like Celtic or Himalayan, take a pop, drink water, your body's going to retain that water better. Yes. And then your skin is a little bit plumper and more I, plump. I, yes. I do want to say something though about Botox. So, I resisted Botox for years and years, and the more it became widely used on television, the more I felt I was working at a disadvantage in front yes. of the camera. Yes. Everybody else was yep. like flawless, and here I am with these wrinkles and these anger lines and all that. So I remember the first time I left the office and I turned around and said to my assistants, I may never see you again, I'm going to be shot up with fish poison. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I got a great dermatologist, and this is really more for the audience. I got a great dermatologist who can say the word no. Oh, that's so oh, important. I think I'd like some filler in my lips. No, no. Diane, yeah. you don't want filler in your lips, but no. You don't want Botox around your mouth. You are going to start to drool uncontrollably. If you are going to get any form of dermatological support, um, you need a, a really realistic, honest, yeah. disciplinary and kind of dermatologist. Would you not say so? Uh, you know, I totally agree. And I think that's what, what happens is we start getting treatments done. Again, I'm not against it, okay? It, the you, it's you start getting treatments and you go oh I look better oh I look better oh I look better let me do more 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 right and it's just our nature and so if you get somebody who doesn't have your best interest at mind then they're gonna go sure let's shoot up okay that's another five hundred dollars that's another five hundred dollars and then you walk out and suddenly you don't look like you and that's when women start looking weird and we don't want to look weird we want to look beautiful so I think if you can get somebody to hold your hand and go okay no no that's enough. Like, and like your guy, that's fantastic because it's just the, if you want to get it done, just get tweaks. You know, you've got the right mentality because you see some women that are, you know, in their seventies, whatever, and they have nothing, no wrinkles. That's not normal, right? We want to look healthy. We want to look genuine. You want, we want your to have face expression. to move. Right. We want our face to move. So now, yeah. yeah. I also, and, and I agree with you when it comes to foundation and I use a very sheer super lightweight powder if there's a time where i think oh we're gonna go on a social media shoot i don't right. want to be so shiny right but um honestly i gotta tell you when it comes to cheek color and i i share my cheek color with my lips i have found these very economical sticks on amazon that impart a lot of 
color, which I think we call in the beauty industry, they're pigment right, pigmented. rich. Yeah. And then I use them on my lips too. I'm very good at smearing. I like to smear stuff in with my fingers. So my first question to you is, do you like that approach? Do you trust it? And how do you feel? You know, I'm not a professional. And every time someone comes and does a professional job on me, it's like, I'm intimidated. They've got yeah. 8,000 brushes. Yeah. And, and here I am, and I'm just using my fingers. And I like things that you can smear on, <laughs> that you can, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that approach of using your own hands and using kind of soft crayon -y kind of color? You know, I, I love what you, what's going to work for you individually. So I actually use my fingers a lot when I make people oh, up. Good. I do. And I, because I'm very tactile, I like to touch. I'm a very touchy human. Huh. So a lot of times I will do like, I'm, I actually have a cream blush on and I put my lipstick on with my fingers. Me too. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I'm actually very, I, I actually think that's fine. Everybody has their own style and take on things. So I try to go with, like I had an actress come in, um, who was on taxi and now her name is just flew out of my head. I, if I said her, Mary Lou Hanner, Mary Lou in. Hanner, Mary yeah. Lou Hanner, the audience is going to know who this is. So she came in and she plopped her bag on the counter and she put her hands on her hips and she looked at me and she said, I do my own makeup. And I Whoa. said, great. I said, I am so <laughs> okay. supportive of you. What can I get you? Like, what do you need? Do you need a cup of coffee? Like, you know, I was just like, I'm here for you. And that's how yeah. I feel about women is I'm here for you. And so she did her makeup and probably that looked good in certain aspects, but for the studio I was working in, it was way too heavy. So I said, huh. Huh. and I put her in front of the camera and we looked in the monitor and she said, Oh, I get it. And then she came back and sat in the makeup chair and said, okay, make me look better for your camera. And I said, okay. And then I just touched her up. And I think you have to, I, I keep that in mind. Like what's, what's best for you. And, you know, I, I think a lot of women, what happens though, is that we get hooked on things that don't work for us, right? And don't look good on us. And or used to work for us 20 years ago, us, right. but and, don't now. Right. And technology has shifted a lot with makeup. So for example, 10 years ago, you know, you might have an eyeliner that works really well, but now technology has shifted and the eyeliners have changed and now we're using gel or we're using this or that. And sometimes it's good to upgrade, to go, okay, let me try this other thing and see what that does, because it's going to have a different, you know, kickback than what you used to use. So a lot of what I find myself doing with clients is saying, okay, let's, let's, let's be open and try something else. Let's try this. And then let's try it this way. And if people, if you're kind of willing to sort of you know, do those shifts, it can really upgrade your look and help you look more current, right? Like you look very beautiful, but you look very current, right? You look fun and playful and that's your personality. And I love that. Like, I wouldn't want to ever take that away from you. I want to enhance that. And that's, that's what I try to do with people is take them from where they're at. Yeah. So I was wearing my hair after chemotherapy, it came back curly, which it never was. And it took a long time to grow. Thank God it came back. And so I was doing, you know, I do a lot of sheer and light lipsticks because I felt um, uh, my eyes couldn't support a dark lip. But now that my hair has grown and it's long and it's sleek, I actually went out and bought a red lipstick. And I tried it the other day and I thought, oh, could I really? So I'm going to ask you, what are your viewpoints about doing, I, I almost call it a star product. Like this becomes a red lip face. That's what you're looking at, those lips. And I'm thinking I've got to do kind of smoky eyes to support the redness of, and the boldness of the <laughs> lip. What is your viewpoint and your attitude towards older women wearing red lipstick? Because I always hear, no, 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 disaster. What's your take on this? I, I very much believe it comes down to the person. So if you have the personality and the flair oh. to pull it off, 
wear it. Why not? I mean, I, you know, I see sometimes I've seen older women with, you know, like bright red lips or like their hair is like, very, that's their personality. So I would, from a creative standpoint, from an artistic standpoint, I more look at it like, how can I judge this and make this look really stylistic as opposed to, you know, there's the borderline. I always joke that there's like this borderline between do I look crazy or do I look creative, right? And there's always that kind of, you know, and am I going along with my personality and what does that, so I always want to judge it a little bit. So from a technical standpoint, I would say, if you're going to do bright red lips, you almost have to pick. Like then you either have to play down the eye a little bit so that the lip is the focal point, like you said. Okay. But if you're trying to do, like right now you have strong eyes and a neutral and a sheer lip, which and is new, beautiful. Always, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times if you put a red lip on a strong eye, it can be, especially on older women, it can just be too much. You can do it on a, a younger much. woman. It's just too much. So then tone the eye down a little bit, like make, make it a brown instead of a black or make it a, exactly. you know, don't yeah. put it underneath, just do the top. So then you have a little bit more of a glamorous look or something like that. So I just because think be willing to judge it, you know, be willing to negotiate with that red lipstick. I, I am thinking, and I'm wondering if you agree that red lips, uh, because red is going to be a very uh, dominant color for Paul, you know, and, and whether you care about fashion or not, you see it so often. Right. And you, and you see certain predominant colors so much on news, female news anchors. That, that to me is my educational, oh, I've got to have that jacket or, right. oh, I've got to get that color because it looks so great. But nobody tells us older girls you know, just kind of do it this way. So it's interesting you said that because after I tried the red lips and I thought, oh, I love them. I thought two things were necessary. First of all, either a slate gray rather than a black uh -huh. or a dark brown. Right. Um, right. And I use a, a, a crayon a kind of eye, eye liner that I can... It's very rich in pigment, but I can also kind of smush it up and over and, and kind of create it as eyeshadow as right. well as, as an eyeliner. It's pure crayon. But the other thing I think is great, and I'm going to say this just from a fashion point of view. Um, if I'm going to do red lips, and I probably would do it with a black suit and maybe a crisp white shirt underneath, I'm going to buy a red handbag. Oh, the color of or those red lips. Shoes. Do you or like red that? Shoes. Yeah, like pick. Like you could do a handbag or yeah, red shoes to either pull way. that together. Anchor Absolutely. your outfit with your yeah. lip. And so, would do you? I want to ask you because this has been so informative. My gosh, I could talk to you forever. What do you think? are the most important trends for fall into winter, into holiday for older women. Younger girls can wear anything. They can wear glittery, sparkly eyeshadow. Right. They can wear real sparkly lips and get away with it. But we don't, I think it's dangerous for us girls to use so much shine. Right. And we also have a lot of problems with wrinkling with around and, the eye, yeah. crepe the eyelid area. Yeah. What is your one piece of advice and your best trend for fall older girls? Our Silverella sisterhood here. <laughs> Silverellas. You know, I look at trend and I say, how much of this can my audience actually wear? Most Hello. of the time, it's like one or maybe two of those things. And so yeah, what I do then is 50. I modify that. Like for example, glitter. Okay, glitter's fabulous. I love glitter. So say you see a lot of glitter in fall. Just do a, like one touch. That's all you have to do. Like maybe, huh. you know, or say, you know, red lips. You brought up red lips. I love red lips. Not everybody can wear them. Well, then do you get a lip gloss with a little bit of a sheer red tint to it? Huh. So you're playing yeah. with it a little bit, but you're doing it in a way that works for you. So that's how I do, that's how I look at trend. I don't look at trend like, okay, we're going to do all of this. Because, you know, I think the graphic eyeliner can. was in for spring, summer. I was like, 
that would look, I would look ridiculous if I tried to do that. I'm 57 years old. I would look like an insane person. So, so I, I, that's my take on it is take what you see and go, okay, let's modify. How can I add that just a little bit? Yeah. So the one thing, and I'm going to go back to red lips in, in a very selfish way, because I need to know, but also because I think that as older women, we feel so left out of yes. the game. There's no yes. models that are older. There's right. no tutorials for older women. And so you're always looking at something like a red lip on a 18 year old model right. who with a perfect face. Thank you very much. So here is my closing question. Okay, I put on those red lips, but as you know, you can get a lot of wrinkles right. around your mouth and around your lips. How do you counteract that red lipstick bleeding out without using, how would you do that? What would your technique be for keeping that on and not having it bleed into wrinkles? That's my biggest worry for using right. red lipstick. Some and I'm in my to, late seventies. Sure. Some of it has to do with the texture of the lipstick. So for example, if you get a matte lipstick, which can sometimes be too heavy, but at the same yeah. time, that's going to bleed a lot less than a cream. Or that's maybe what a, I got. Yeah. A sheer. Right. So I think watch your textures and the drier, the better for bleeding. So the drier the lipstick, right? In other words, the more dewy it's going to bleed, the drier it's not. The other trick is to take your foundation and put it on your lips. Put your foundation. I do that too. Yay. That works. A little bit of powder on your lips. Put your, take your Ooh. lip liner Put and do your lipstick and then your lip liner. That'll help you not do too heavy of a lip liner. But, um, but lip liners will really help as well to keep that lipstick on. So those are my great tricks. I think if you have a lot of um, wrinkles around here, you want to stay with lipsticks that are very dry, um, which yeah. is hard because a lot of times I don't like dry lipsticks. I like things to be a little bit dewy, but. But that is kind of a side trick. And, you know, I think because you just don't want to put on your red creamy lipstick and then it's, you know, it's up to your nose. It's just not good. <laughs> it's interesting. When I bought yeah. this red lipstick and I realized that because of all the white hair I have now, the sleekness of it, I can handle that dramatic kind of look. I bought matte, but I never thought about putting a little powder. Yeah on my lips to counteract bleeding. Oh, that's great advice. So I love fall. I always wait all year long because I think it's this beautiful transition and I get to yes. wear the kind of clothing I love, sweaters and blazers, but it's that look of your face. So the other thing I was wearing a very apricot kind of um, stick blush on for summer, but now I'm trading it off for almost a pink toned wine for yeah. fall. So it that goes would be lovely. You a would little look amazing and wine. deeper. Yeah. Right. And you can do the deeper. So lipstick, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We need more of your advice. And that is why you are called the beauty shaman. Shaman. That's right. And you are the shaman of beauty, I am the for shaman, sure. Yeah. Yeah. This was fascinating, Suzanne Blondes. It was such a pleasure to get to talk to you. And um, for everybody out there that loves this podcast, um, we will list how to get to Suzanne, how to see her YouTube presence. And you know what? Stay beautiful, my dear. I really, really appreciate you coming on my you podcast too. Thank today. Thank you. And remember, you're always going to be too young to be old. That's you and me. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Too Young to Be Old podcast. The episode may be over, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Diane Gilman, or visit our website, thedianegilman.com. If you like the show, leave us a rating or a review, and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And until then, don't forget, age is just a number. Together, 
will prove that we are all too young to be old.